Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to configure and use ELK stack, in other words, Elasticsearch Logstash and Kibana for application logging. A major challenge in distributed system is to understand what is going on and even more importantly, what is wrong, where and why. In this video, we will see how to use the ELK stack from Elastic to aggregate log events from our microservices. There are a lot of tools which can do the magic if you properly use it together. One such popular set of tools are Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. ELK stack is a great open source stack for log aggregation and analytics. Elasticsearch is a NoSQL database and distributed search and analytics engine. If you look at the benefits of Elasticsearch, it is very easy to install and use. It is a very powerful internal search technology. It was built using Apache Luzin. It is also a RESTful web service. It is open source. Logstash is a log shipping and passing service. In other words, it is a transportation pipeline used to populate Elasticsearch with data. If you look at the benefits of using a Logstash, it's again an open source tool. It collects, passes, and stores logs for future. It is a log aggregator. Kibana is a web interface that connects users with the Elasticsearch database and enables visualization and search options for system operation users benefits. It's again an open source data visualization. You can create graphical representation with logs very easily. Even beginners can execute powerful log searches very easily using Kibana. Elasticsearch is getting quite popular nowadays with a large open source community. If you have to compare Splunk with Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, actually both are very good log platforms. Splunk actually edges out ELK because of the less configuration needed to configure in Splunk forwarders when compared to Beats and Logstash in ELK. The ELK stack is popular because it fulfills a need in the log analytics space. Splunk's enterprise software has long been the market leader, but its numerous functionalities are increasingly not worth the expensive price. ELK is a simple but robust log analysis platform that costs a fraction of the price. But nowadays, cost is a major contributor when building new projects and products. And the real question you should be asking is if you need all the features of the Splunk for the kind of money that you're paying, ultimately for any small or medium enterprises, having a low budget cost can go for the ELK stack and large enterprises should choose Splunk over ELK. Splunk is used by many major enterprises like Adobe, Cisco, Symantec, Coca-Cola, etc. ELK is used by Stack Overflow, LinkedIn, Netflix, OpenStack, Medium.com, Accenture, etc. Let us take a look at this pictorial representation of what actually happens at the background. You have application 1 and application 2. The logs are then fed to the log stash. Log stash transfers this data in a pipe to Elasticsearch. So then Elasticsearch indexes the data and then feeds it to the Kibana where the user actually uses the Kibana console to look at the logs of the applications. So this is a very simple uh, pictorial representation of what actually happens at the background. Uh, now let's go and configure uh, Logstash, Elasticsearch and Kibana and then let's try to run all these things together and let's see how to configure and how, to, how the logs are getting streamed to Kibana from our local application. Before we move on to the example, Let's first download Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana from these download links. I'll give this download links in the description below. So you have to click on this download link, go to the downloads page, download the Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Logstash, unzip all three into three different folders in any location of your computer. The location doesn't matter. So once you download and unzip this, we are good to go. We can just run it directly from the console and start all these three services. Okay, so I have downloaded Elasticsearch, Kibana and Logstash to my local machine and I have unzipped them in three different folders. Now let's go and try to run the services. The start command for Elasticsearch is pretty easy and straightforward. You just have to do bin slash Elastic 
search. Okay, looks like our elastic search is up and running. You could see here it's running on the local host 9200 port. So let's go to our Chrome and let's fire a, um, a get request on this URI to see what we get. Cool. So when I try to access the URI localhost 9200, I get this JSON response back. Like I mentioned before, Elasticsearch is a RESTful web service component. Okay, so our Elasticsearch is up and running. Now let's go and start our Kibana. So again, I have downloaded it in my downloads folder. Uh, let's, let's start the Kibana. All you have to do is like, you have to do bin Kibana. Okay, so our Kibana is up and running and you could see here it's running on the port 5601. So let's go to our Chrome and let's try to access our Kibana console. Alright, cool. So looks like our Kibana is up and running and this is the console that you see. Alright, so now let's go to our log stash. Let's go back to the console and I have downloaded my log stash in the downloads folder. To configure the log stash, you need to create a config file that specifies which plugin you want to use and settings for each plugins. You can reference each fields in a configuration and use conditional to process events when they meet a certain criteria. So there are three important components in a log stash configuration file. One is the input, the other is the filter, and the third one is the output. So I have created a sample configuration and uh, uh, let's use this configuration for this example to stream our logs uh, from our Spring Boot application to Kibana. Let me quickly open up the log stash file for you. So this is my a simple uh, log stash file. Uh, I, as I mentioned, right, I'm going to use the input and the output. I don't have any filters, but you can definitely add a lot of filters to make your components much easier to view and access in Kibana. So let's quickly discuss what we have done here. So the, I mentioned the file. The file is going to be a syslog and the path of the file is going to be this particular location. So in case of a uh, Windows machine, you can give the entire path as C colon, the entire path where your log is going to be generated by your Spring Boot application. The log file name is another hyphen log dot log. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to output the data to Elasticsearch. The host information of the Elasticsearch is here. And I'm going to index with the name logging app. If you don't give this information, it will be default indexed with log stash. Uh, so it's a good practice to do this, you know. So that's our log stash configuration file. Now let's go and run the log stash. So to run this log stash, again, it's bin slash log stash. Hyphen F log stash simple conf so let me run this file all right there are a few things that you might notice here that it has already connected to our elastic search so it's an inbuilt feature you have a log stash that yaml file which has the information about the host information that you have to connect to and all those stuff so in case of production you'll be changing a lot in that so we have successfully started our log stash api endpoint and here you could see here the path is also verified in case if the path is wrong you will get an error directly here and it will stop the you know, log stash from starting up and there are a couple of things that you need to know before you configure the you know, the config file uh, this file um, you cannot have uh, camel casing uh, if you have camel casing here it will throw an error so there are th these are a few things that you need to know the most of the configurations, you could take a look at the Elasticsearch uh, log stash documentation. The documentation is super clear and super neatly put together. If you take a look at the few things, right, you'll understand that you can configure your application accordingly. 
for more details on the log stash configurations you could take a look at this uh, the documentation guide that, that they have in the elastic uh, website uh, it is pretty much straightforward and it is neatly put together so you should not have any trouble in going through this and having your own configuration creating your own configuration uh, filters and plugins for your application so now our initial setup is done let's go to a spring boot application and let's try to create something there okay before we go to a spring boot application you could see here i have accessed the logstash uh, uri here and it gives me the information about the host uh, details all the stuff so this is one way of verifying whether the application is working fine or not so all our three um, technical stacks are up and running so we should be good now let's go to a spring boot application all right I, what i did here is like i created a very simple spring boot application uh, there is not anything super fancy here just had the spring boot starter web uh, dependency here and I'm using Spring Boot 1. You could very well go ahead and use Spring Boot 2. And let's go to our controller, the logging controller. So again, the logging controller, uh, I have the uh, couple of methods in it. Uh, both are get mappings. Uh, one is going to log the debug information and other is going to throw an exception. So we need this exception and the log debug information to be captured and sent to the Kibana, okay? And then let's go to our application.yaml. Uh, we have this application.yaml here. Uh, I just have given a server port as 9988. And you have to mention the logging file. Once you mention the logging file, the logging file will be created in the same folder as the microservice logging root directory. And then I have the application name. You can very well go ahead and mention the root level information. And there are a lot of information that you can mention. Uh, with respect to logging so there are a lot of things that you can explore here for this example i'm going to keep it very simple so i have created this application.yaml and the method is too simple now let's just start the server and then let's go to a browser and let's try to access this application and let us see what is the output we get in our kibana console okay okay the server is up and running let's go to our console so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do 9988 all right so i have accessed this uri the uri is not going to return anything it's just going to it's a void method it's just going to throw an exception and we are going to catch that exception okay so let me try to access this couple of times okay and then let's go to our get name let's just pass a name here all right we have got a response simple programming and the new date all right let's access this couple of times okay okay so now this is done now let's go to our kibana so in our kibana uh, this is our kibana console and once you go to the kibana console go to management index patterns First, you need to index a pattern in the Kibana console. And before that, let's quickly take a look, go to our Elasticsearch console. In the Elasticsearch console, if you go to this particular URI, you'll take a look at all the available REST service URIs for you to access and get information from the Elasticsearch. For example, let's say I want to take a look at the indexes. What are the different indexes available in the system? And you could see here, these are the different indexes that are available in the elastic search ready for to be streamed to the kibana console so all these are something that i created and um, you can use this information to verify whether the your configurations of log stash elastic search and your application is correctly streaming the data to elastic search or not only when you see this index here you will be able to see it in the kibana if you don't see the index here you will not be able to see view it or uh, visualize or take a look at the logs in the kibana okay so first you have to create an index once you go to kibana click on management create index and in the index you have to give the name for which that you have configured in your log stash config so now log stash config we have given a name logging app and i have already created this but anyway I'll click on next 
you have to give a filter here the time filter for this example you don't have to give a timestamp just click on I don't want to use timestamp and click on create index pattern I've already created a couple of index patterns here and you could see here once it is created right all these filters will be available for you to make a use of so these are the different filters that I have created so once this is successfully done right go to your discover window go to your discover window you could see here the different logging indexes that are created by you in the management console in our example I'm going to take the logging app you could see here the log has been streamed successfully to the Kibana alright so you could see here the logging.debug that we actually configured on our application request parameter to simple programming you could see that it has captured all this information and there is a throw exception also so there is a throw exception in the login controller you could see here I haven't printed the stack here but you can go ahead and print the stack and you will see the entire stack here let me try to show you an entire stack how it will be represented here let me go to this microservice example okay here it is so if you look at here right this is how your entire stack will be printed in here so this is how you can configure your application logging for with the help of Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana components. There are multiple things that you can, you can do here. Uh, you can even create a visualize of your uh, um, your logs and your other things using uh, pie charts, uh, you know, area map, all those things. And then you have a lot of information that you can really make use of. Uh, there is a APM metrics also available. Uh, but for this example, uh, I just kept it very simple on how to configure uh, and how to, uh, you know, stream your logs to this ELK stack. With this, we come to the end of this video lecture. I hope this video was very helpful for you. Please subscribe and watch out for more such videos. Thank you.